Seasons greetings everyone. This week we take you to Spring Garden Trace Wim to explore Villa Wim and Fancy. This property sits on a quarter acre of land and offers a panoramic view of Tobago. Let's have a look at what's to come in the next half hour. I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. The third turning ceremony signals the expansion of TNTech's Cove Power Plant. We take you to the handover ceremony of iGaze Technology and later we tell you about one new place shoppers should visit for the Christmas season. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. Now this property reflects a contemporary style. It has five bedrooms and sleeps a maximum of 12 people comfortably. The soothing colors and the beautiful art pieces set the tone for your Caribbean dream vacation. So Tobago Day is here again. Even though celebrations were on a smaller scale this year, they are no less important. Omodara Mills has highlights of the activities which took place this year. Have a look. This year, the celebrations included the annual Tobago Day service of praise and thanksgiving at the Canaan Church of the Nazarene. Many believe that our rich and varied history, which has been influenced by African and European customs, needs to be celebrated. Tobago is particularly unique in that we would have changed hands no less than 30 times. In other words, many different European countries ruled us at some point in time. And therefore, one of the legacies that we would have inherited is the various cultural forms that we now practice. Tobago Day is an occasion for Tobagonians to reflect on the island's development and achievements over the years. One such aspect is our colorful and vibrant cultural performances. So it was only fitting to have a cultural celebration on this year's Tobago Day agenda. The showcase highlighted the island's talented musicians. Exhibitions at the Scarborough Library facility and the Assembly Legislature gave the public a peek into the island's legal, social and economic circumstances over the decades. The development of our governance system is another major milestone that's highlighted during the series of activities. As the island's leaders look to the future, they are ensuring that our young people develop a passion for policy formation and well-informed debates. So the annual youth debate topped off the week of activities for 2017. The official date of Tobago Day is December 4th. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. 
Villa Wim and Fancy was constructed in 1994 by Marcus Haas. It was then purchased by the Williamsons in 2000 and used as a bed and breakfast until 2006 when it was purchased by the present owners. Now, the Trinidad and the Tobago Electricity Commission would soon be able to power more than 60,000 homes as the expansion of the coal power plant is on schedule. Caroline Wallace has all the details in this report. Listen up. The Cove Power Plant, owned by the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, TNTAC, will be expanded from 64 megawatts to 84 megawatts. This simply means Tobago's power generation capacity will be increased. The additional 25% of total power generation will give the facility the capability to power 70,000 homes. This means that more industrial plants and tourist facilities will be able to be stored in the near future, and Antiantec will have the capacity to meet the low demand growth. Although the existing power generation capacity of Tobago meets its current demand of 56 megawatts, a number of factors prompted this expansion. Among them is the need to diversify the island's generation fleet, as well as the existence of two age generators in Scarborough which provide only 8 megawatts in standby mode. Efforts to minimize outages through preventative maintenance and upgrades to the grid remain an essential area of focus. However, in meeting our commitment to national development, it is necessary to develop and implement medium to long-term plans. The objective of this plant expansion is therefore intended to address deficiencies in the existing configuration and to improve the long-term reliability of the electricity supply in Tobago. The project will involve the installation of a new gas turbine and ancillary infrastructure. Its life expectancy is more than 20 years, and as similar to an aircraft engine, it can be upgraded and recycled. Chief Secretary Calvin Charles is pleased that added emphasis is being placed on making Tobago's electricity supply more efficient, reliable, and predictable. This expansion will ensure that the increase in demand for electricity will be matched by an available supply. This assurance is a prerequisite for business confidence, thereby facilitating the successful implementation and completion of a number of our development projects here in Tobago. The expansion will cost $132 million dollars and is set to be completed by July 2018. I'm Caroline Wallace for Lesson Talk Tobago. This property is surrounded by a beautiful flower garden and an array of tropical fruits, making it the perfect place for your next small wedding. Management facilitates small social events with a maximum of 30 people. Now, in today's world, HIV AIDS is an epidemic that affects many families worldwide. So in commemoration of World AIDS Day, the Ministry of Labor and Small Enterprise Development hosted a one-day symposium to address HIV stigma and discrimination. Crystal George has the details in this report. We all know about the effects of HIV, a virus that attacks the body immune system, leaving it vulnerable to infection. It's also the cause of AIDS but can be well managed with the right treatment. The United Nation is working towards ending this epidemic through 1999 vision. It's aimed at ensuring that everyone affected by the disease has access to treatment. To commemorate World AIDS Day, the Ministry of Labor and Small Enterprise Development and Tobago Library Services hosted a one-day symposium to raise awareness about HIV stigma and discrimination in the workplace. By 2020, which is in what, three years or so, we are hoping that everyone in the world, everyone who is HIV positive, that 90% of those people know that they are HIV positive. The only way for people to know that they are HIV positive is to get tested. The theme for this event was HIV stigma and discrimination, a workplace issue. HIV stigma and discrimination can discourage those affected by and living with the virus from sharing the news with their loved ones or getting treatment. The reality is stigma leads to sickness. Those who may think that they have been at risk for HIV, 
they refuse to go and get tested because once you know, in your mind is a different story. Prevention is better than cure. So the session is also included in a demonstration from nurses on the correct use of both male and female condoms. The Tobago Regional Health Authority also recognized the World AIDS Day by forming a human red ribbon and providing free HIV testing to the public at various locations and also at the Tobago prison. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, we take you to the handover ceremony of iGaze Technology. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Stay with us. What keeps guests coming back to Villa Women Fancy is the peaceful location and of course the panoramic view. To keep guests occupied, management can arrange bird watching tours and if that's not enough, guests have the option of taking a cool dip in the pool or read books available at the Villa's library. Now some people are not able to fully function in the everyday world because they aren't afforded with some of the very same things we take for granted. In this next story, we tell you about one physically restricted young man in Tobago and how he's getting some help from a technological device to be able to live a normal life. Have a look. 17-year-old Davian Webster was injured in an accident, resulting in loss of some mobility in his arms. Now, with the assistance of eye gaze technology, he's able to communicate without using his arms. This was made possible by the Children's Ark of Trinidad and Tobago. The non-governmental organization partnered with eye gaze technicians from LC Technologies Incorporated in Virginia, USA. They conducted technical assessments on six children, including Davion, at the Scarborough General Hospital in Tobago. You are one of four candidates who have qualified for the use of this device. I am very happy to present you with the eye gaze device and to know that you now have the opportunity to continue your education, to learn, to grow and develop and to reach your true and fullest potential. The eye gaze edge is an eye operated communication and control system. It allows people with disabilities to interact with the rest of the world. I feel happy that I'm the first, one of the first person in Tobago to really use the eye gaze. And I, con I will continue to use it in the best of my ability. I'll be able to do my schoolwork. And that may let have fun and I could have fun as... Yeah. This tool his father believes will make a difference in Davian's life. He was supposed to be doing the exam next year. So it's really nice that he can have something that he can use to make it, yeah, to follow up on. Because right now he hasn't been doing any schoolwork. So this will help him a lot. Speech therapists at the Tobago Regional Health Authority were trained in using the device so that they too can assist Davion. This is the first time that eye gaze technology will be used in Tobago. Here's a fun fact. Each bedroom is named after one of the world's significant rivers. This one is the Ganges after the Ganges River in India. That's a sacred river to Hindus. Now domestic violence still continues to be a serious problem in our society. Many organizations in Tobago are doing their part in the global movement to eliminate gender-based violence. Omodara Mills tells us more in this next report. Police reports indicate that from 2010 to 2015, there were over 11,000 reported cases of domestic violence, females making up 75% of those incidents. During that same period, there were over 130 domestic violence-related deaths 
more than 50% were women. One woman who had the courage to leave her abusive relationship and speak out is Onika Maz, founder of the Women of Substance organization. She spoke at the Women's Economic and Technological Empowerment Center, WeTex Media Launch, for their 16 days of activism against gender-based violence campaign. I am a survivor of domestic violence and abuse, and a survivor who is no longer ashamed because what I've recognized is that I am not to be blamed for my, my perpetrator or my abuser's behavior towards me. So hence the reason why this organization was started. I started a domestic violence support group a year and a half ago, and out of that support group, Women of Substance was born. In Tobago, many cases are unreported. Only eight incidents of domestic violence have been reported for this year, six of which are female victims and two male victims. In dealing with the problem, WeTech works closely with other agencies, such as the Citizens Security Program, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, and women's organizations. The aim is to provide survivors with as many opportunities to live a more wholesome life. We provide support to women who are looking to get away from their situations, families. So they come with children, most times they come with a child or two or three, and we have to f deal with them based on that level. The way we deal with it is that we, within our division, we have services that we can refer them to, or they can come from referrals through the different agencies that we have within the division. A public education fair was held by the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development. The activities are in keeping with the global movement that's promoting 16 days of activism against gender-based violence under the theme, Leave No One Behind, End Violence Against Women and Girls. Since domestic violence affects everyone, WeTech offers a holistic approach to those who come for help. And under the empowerment model, you try to identify what are the skills and, and abilities that the person has because many times we feel that because a person is in crisis, they don't really have nothing, but they do. They do have a brain, they do have education, they do have um, the capacity to be a business person or to do something more with their lives. They were probably never given the opportunity in a, a, an abusive situation. So at this point when we make the intervention, that's how we look at it. Here's an opportunity to give a woman a, a chance to empower herself and her family. The 16 days of activism started on November 25th, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, and ends on December 10th, Human Rights Day. If you or someone you know needs help, contact the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development at 639-3395 or 639-4646. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The name of the property is inspired by its location. The owners of the property decided to have this business in Tobago because they found it to be a really good place to invest for the future. Now, owning a business can be hard, but giving up your dream of owning a business can be even harder. That's why the Youth Energized for Success, or YES, program hosted a workshop to lend support to the young entrepreneurs in Tobago. Here are the details. Being a first-time business owner can be tough, especially without the right guidance and finances. The Youth Energized for Success Units workshop, entitled Entrepreneurs for Tomorrow, is giving training and support to the island's young entrepreneurs. This will give them the best possible chance for success. We at YES saw the need to take it a step further and provide additional su support to our young persons on the island who may have a burning desire to act upon a dream of business ownership. This Entrepreneurs of Tomorrow workshop is our way of providing analytical understanding of the local business environment some evidence-based practices based on relevant and real-life experiences. The four-day workshop focused on strategies and techniques used in today's business environment. What is wonderful about this program is that you were so energized. 
so energized. Well, of course, we are youth energized for success. So you are energized, and I'm, you know what I'm hoping? That at the end of this program, you will be even more energized so that some of you, or even all of you, would make the effort to start a business. Start something. Do something positive with all the information that you've been given over the past four days. During the workshop, participants were divided into teams. Each team had to create their own business, create a challenge, and explain their strengths and weaknesses. One group came up with the idea of opening a marina that can double as an event hub. So there are a lot of persons in Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean as well as international persons that have yachts and boats and would love to come to Tobago. So that is our um, market segment that we will be catering towards, right? And they can't come to Tobago because they don't necessarily have a marina where they could dock safely and exit their boat and come on shore. They have to use little dinghies. Another problem we notice is that the environmental hazard that that um, exists with not having a marina, we have spillage of um, oil and gas in the ocean affecting our reefs and other um, marine habitat. Certificates were awarded to all participants. I'm Marlon Gutzleben for Let's Talk to Bego. Coming up next, BDU's Christmas Village. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk to Bego. We'll be right back. Villa Wim and Fancy gives you the ultimate vacation as it comes with scenery, sand and a saltwater infinity pool. Nothing can be more spectacular than this. No Christmas is complete without black cake, fruit cake, ham and chow chow and the list goes on. But there's a special location being created for you to shop this Christmas season to get all these and more. Listen up. As Tobagonians prepare for Christmas Day, there's no need for the usual hustle and bustle from uptown to downtown. All local products and services can be found in one location, the Christmas Village, hosted at the Scarborough Esplanade by the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development, and Labor's Business Development Unit. We anticipate it will become an annual event. The, the objective, the main goal of this Christmas Village is to encourage persons to buy local. Over the years, we would have invested in persons through grant funding, loan funding, as well as through the Division of Community Development, because we are now realigned with the Division of Community Development. Community Development would have hosted a number of vocational training skills program over the years. So as a result, this is an amalgamation of all the various programs that we have. Over 70 vendors will form the Christmas Village from December 11th to the 16th. There will be a grand opening on December 11th at 4.30 p.m. We have 73 exhibitors registered so far. And what we have created, what we want to create are various clusters along the Esplanade. So as you walk in, you're actually walking into a village. So we have a food court, for example, where you have the punch of cream and the wine, the local products and then we have the specialty where you have the ham and the turkeys and the chow chow etc. We have Santa's workshop where you have got the drapery and the woodworking and the soft furnishing. Established businesses from downtown Scarborough will also be part of the Christmas village. We've been hearing the cry that Scarborough is slow, business is slow. So as a result we have extended the invitation to businesses in Scarborough to participate and partner with us. We will also be having cultural shows. The Christmas Village will be opened Monday to Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The villa is a short distance from the island's capital, Scarborough. The beautiful Rockley Bay can be seen anytime during the day and the sparkling lights at Scarborough by night. 
Now, the Community-Based Environmental Protection and Enhancement Program, or CPEP, was designed to keep our island clean. But around this time of the year, they do a series of civic-minded community initiatives. With all the details in this story. The Boko Beach is one of the many areas kept clean and beautiful by the Community-Based Environmental Protection and Enhancement Program, CPEP. But CPEP is more than just landscaping and cleaning. Every year, districts engage in their 12 Joys of Christmas series. For the Buku district, they are doing a food distribution drive right here on the beach where they clean. We are community base, right, CPEP. So we, um, in, at the end of the year, we decide to meet with the community and give back and to be able to you know, get a more personal um, interaction with them. And, Today is our day for, for such thing. Besides the Christmas kitchen at Buku, the 12 Joys of Christmas schedule included a seedling and hamper distribution drive in Bonacord, a plant clinic at Riseland, a Christmas craft shop at Castara, and special Christmas cleaning for senior citizens. For program coordinator Janelle Berkeley, it's more than spreading Christmas cheer. CPEP is community-based, as I said, so it is a time where we reconnect with the community and also we encourage partnerships because although the teams would have prepared, persons in communities would have assisted by donations, so we had a tent donated, we got some drinks donated, we got food donated. So it's a chance for us to reconnect and also you know, partner with the wider community in spreading the joy of Christmas. CPEP has been around for over a decade. The unit falls under the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor. The program helps the Assembly care for the environment while developing the island's economy. CPEP is instrumental and has been instrumental in keeping Tobago clean, green, safe and serene. Um, we have teams, as I said, throughout the island that on a daily basis would maintain public spaces, remove, um, we also partake in bulk waste removal, you know, which is going to be critical around Christmas time when persons will be changing out the old for the new. So we provide essential environmental services to the residents of Tobago. CPEP has about 500 employees in the 12 districts around the island. As they move forward, they hope to do their part in keeping the island clean and green. I'm Amadar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say. The segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we are asking, what does Tobago Day mean to you? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. Tobago Day for me is about celebrating our milestones, our legacies, the things that would have been contributed by our former leaders. It gives me a sense of belonging. It, it gives me a sense of sovereignty. And uh, it also means to me that Tobago is now on the pathway to its own development and relevance to the development of Tobago. The importance of what it means to be themselves, to give, and to understand the sharing of all the, all the history that we have, which makes us special people. As a Trinidadian living in Tobago for like over 15 years, it's a privilege to live on the island of Tobago. There's still a lot of work to do, but Tobago continues to grow. It's really and truly pride in terms of what we here in Tobago uh, is accustomed to, the citizens of Tobago. I must say kudos to all those who have contributed to the development of Tobago and hope that those of us who are now the builders, each of us come with our brick and build Tobago better, stronger and sounder because it is ours. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and, as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
from our house to yours. I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Boys Brigade Ceremony. We do hope you enjoy it.